If you're seriously ill or critically injured. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. Very seriously injured. In some of the UK's most remote places. Oh, 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 I can't, do you hurt? Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. There's just been an accident on the M1 motorway. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Your life is on the line. How far did he fall? About five metres. He's intubated and ventilated. You need some of Britain's most elite medics. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, there is, yeah. Calm, fill, legs, anything below my neck. We're in a remote location in the middle of the woodland. We've broken the back. The speed of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance can make the difference between life and death. Your discretion, take off. Third nine lifted. Today, a car plunges off a flyover and the driver is trapped. We're going to be struggling here, really, to get him out. Yeah! High in the Dales, a cyclist is seriously injured. Complex open fracture, significant amount of bleeding. It's normally a, a really good descender, but everyone gets it wrong every now and again, don't they? And an elderly dairy farmer is attacked by one of his herd. I was laid in my stomach, yeah, and she was jumping up and down and back of my legs and mostly bottom half of my body. Yorkshire's two air ambulances cover Britain's biggest county, 5,000 square miles, 5 million people. And today, it's under the watchful eye of paramedic Lee Greenwood. South of Junction 46. Yeah, Paul, the now over? He's manning the dispatch desk, monitoring 999 calls as they come in to ambulance control. Any communications that they um, filter back through me, um, I'll put into system um, and keep them updated. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? With a multiple request for ambulance, fire and police. And this one sounds serious. Junction 46 has led one southbound. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Is anyone trapped? I, I would think so. Live CCTV cameras on the M1 motorway are capturing the aftermath of the freak accident. A blazing car has plunged 50 feet onto the carriageway. Did you see anyone thrown from the vehicle? No. Don't worry about it. We've got the help organised. We'll get down there as soon as we can. The airbase at Nostal is 10 miles from the scene of the crash. Pilot Gary Brasher will have paramedics Tony Wilkes and Paul Holmes there in five minutes. Southbound at 146. But there's a problem. They're heading for a busy motorway intersection. Landing will require all Gary's flying skills. No, no, uh, this is good. Can you just confirm whether the highways will close the uh, carriageways, please? Yeah, Paul, as Roger, I spoke to highways and requested that the um, close um, both carriageways down over. Seriously. A passing motorist saw the accident. I was basically travelling southbound and I seen a ball of flames coming down from the embankment and hit into the middle of the bridge. The fire has finally been extinguished, but the injured driver is still trapped in the car. It could be a, a prolonged extraction. It depends on if the patient's sort of the physically trapped through injuries, um, or they're not actually, you know, trapped by the actual wreckage of the car that's um, preventing them from being released. There looks a bit of uh, frantic movement in that car. The motorway is still open. Gary can't land on the carriageway. He must look for a safe landing site. All right, do you want me to land on the bank and then the bank top? A grass verge is the only option. But if need be, I'll relocate. OK, mate. Hey, are you all right? Right. Got a guy in there. It's in a bad way. OK, mate. Are these all right to stand on, aren't we? Cheers, mate. An ex-police officer who also saw the smash is in the car with the driver. When I got here, he was unconscious. He's got a good Keeps. pulse. He's coming round now. OK. And I think he's consumed a bit of alcohol. As well. No worries. It sounds like he might be in drink as well. So that's going to compound a lot of things, I think, really, isn't it? 
If the accident was caused by alcohol or drug abuse, it will be a matter for the police. For Paul, the patient's condition makes it very difficult to assess his injuries, particularly head trauma. We're going to be struggling here, really, to get him out. We'll get a collar on him. I'm put, to be honest, I might have to get in yet. We'll try and go foot boot first. We'll try that one. Let's have a quick look at him. Yeah. yeah. Just let us know what you want. Hi, mate. You all right? My name's Paul. Right, I'll just have a quick listen to his chest. Keep looking over. Good lad. Although drink driving is on the decline, alcohol-related road fatalities still account for one in six traffic deaths in the UK. He's got rise and fall, but I can't really hear much, to be honest. This man has experienced a huge impact. His shallow breathing and unresponsiveness is very worrying. Can I take head and neck? Yeah, is that all right? Because I'm in a bit of an awkward position here. We're not sure what injuries he's got at the minute. Paul's just training to assess him. Uh, obviously, the first thing to do is to get him extricated so it can uh, assess him properly and get him treated if needs be. We'll not get that out easy, will we? It's a tricky situation for Paul. Assessment is easier out of the vehicle. But if the patient is moved before he's stabilised, this could cause further damage. What hurts? Oh, your waist. Your waist. Oh, tender there, right side. Yeah, yeah. Is that hurt him? Yeah. We're going to have to get him out. We're going to have to get the seat out, aren't we? To get because I'm, I'm reluctant to lift him. Yeah. Because there's not enough of us here to get a good enough position. The fire crew remove the back seats within minutes and the board to protect his spine goes into position. If we get him on his back, then he'll be ready to scoop off the board, won't we? Keep it coming, keep coming, keep coming. Stretches alongside us now. He's out, but seems very agitated. What's hurting? Fuck you! No, I'm not fucking you. Hey, hey. Keep your hands hey. still for me. Oi, oi, oi. Keep still. Keep That's still. enough, stop it. It's not a step. Mm. my imagination. No, no. The injured man's abuse and violence could be down to the alcohol, but this sort of behaviour might also point to the suspected head injury. Get off me. We're not getting off you, mate. We can't get off get you, can we? We can't get off you, mate. We're trying to help you. Either way, it's going to alter how he gets to hospital. I'm to not stay... a I know, mate, and we need you to help Bro, us. Ah! To... What's We're hurting? going in by land. If he's not, if not taking him in there, I'll go in, I'll go in with crew. The risk of not being able to restrain him in a helicopter is too great. Right, calm down, calm down. I'll tell you what, relax. strap him to board. Yeah, I think it's going to be his best we'll Strap him to board. Restraining him seems extreme, but his safety and those trying to help him has to be considered. He'll, he'll not move his arm. Are you to sort out pelvic binder for us, yeah? The man starts to calm down, and he's ready to be transported by ambulance. But then, something that takes everyone by surprise. The car you're in, is it yours? It's what? Listen, listen to me. There's no kids in the car, were there? No kids in the car. I'm always conscious when there's a car seat and kids' toys about. It's a shocking revelation. If the driver's to be believed, a child is missing and almost certainly badly injured. And the man is sticking to his story. Where's your nephew? Mm -hmm. what? In the back of the car? Yeah. Are you 100% sure? Yes! Did everybody hear that? Yeah, yeah. Don't fucking tell me! Just um, speak to the fire, just say he reckons there was somebody else in the car. Idiot. How old's your nephew? Is that? Is yeah. kidding? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, his nephew. The man's story is of immediate concern to the police. A thorough search gets underway. The car will be jacked up, but there's always the possibility the child has been ejected before the impact. Some forest area in the top, but go into there and have a right good look in there. If the account is true, a child's life may be in danger. The Yorkshire Dales have become a mecca for cyclists, thanks to their starring role in the Tour de France two years ago. 
But these steep climbs and high-speed descents are more dangerous than they look. And on the picturesque Buttertubs Pass, there's been a bad accident. Job. Dispatcher Pete Rhodes is scrambling Helimed 99 from its base on the edge of the Dales. Cyclist into a wall, head injury, collarbone, serious bleeding, apparently. Can't, can't call the call back now. Signal crew 25 minutes away. Cheers, bye. We're off to butter tubs for a cyclist who's got to be back me for a while. As pilot Elaine Hunter gets her team off the ground, Pete's trying to get more information from the rider's friend. I believe you were the gentleman that's had an accident on the butt tubs pass. I'd just like to know um, uh, his injuries and any sort of pulse, if you've got any breathing rate, what his level of consciousness is, please. Excellent. So the, the main concern is he's got the confusion to his forehead and he's got possibly a complicated open collarbone fracture. Local paramedics are heading for the scene too, but they face a long drive on slow roads. Paramedic A.D. Fell is a keen cyclist. Cycling can be quite dangerous, especially if the dales are in the moors or somewhere, you're out cycling on your own. You can get yourself a bit too overexcited and giddy and cycle down the hills a little bit too quick, and then you come to the bottom and the corner's a little bit too sharp, and off you come and into a dry stone wall, which is very unforgiving. Main injuries, he appears to have a complex open fracture to his clavicle, significant amount of bleeding, undetermined sight, and contusions to forehead. There's the ambulance set ahead. So you might find a nice bit of flat next to the road. Elaine can't land next to the accident. The hill's too steep. So paramedic Sammy Wills faces a half-mile hike up 400 feet of fellside to reach her patient. Yeah, I'd rather be cycling, although I think it would be uh, the lowest gear going up here. Just in time, a lift arrives. Hey. Can we jump in? We just came to lift up the hill. A Merc with two holidaymakers, now recruited to join the rescue. Oh, welcome to Yorkshire. It is a beautiful place. But this is a little hot spot, so just park up where you feel safe. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes, so thank you. Tom. Hiya, Tom. 52-year-old, obviously, yep. coming downhill, yep. speed, couldn't get around the corner. He's come head first off his bike, straight into the wall, head first. Yeah. He's got a nice hematoma to his forehead there. OK, yeah. He's got lacerations above his eyelid. Yeah. Hematoma. Tom's a veteran cyclist. Yeah and he's in a bad way. Yeah, excellent. That helmet has done most yeah. of its job. Thinking major trauma centre. Yeah, so you witnessed it? Was he awake the whole time? Yeah, he's been with him. Good. Right. Great. OK. Tom, my name's Sammy. I'm another paramedic, OK? With you keeping your head nice and still for us, I'm just going to cut down the back of your shirt, OK? Oh, I know... Cut with knife and you've got to it's off. already cut, mate. I'm sorry. Okay, just so we can have Tom's a... well enough to be concerned about his biking gear. But his symptoms are very worrying. It's possible to reach 60 miles an hour down this hill. Just overcooked it on corner and decided to uh, hit the brakes. Have you got any pain down here, sir? No. Nothing in, nothing particular? He's normally a, a really good descender, but everyone gets it wrong every now and again, don't they? They're handling Tom gently. There are fears for his spine and head, oh, okay. despite the helmet. We're going to get you up and out, bud. He's going to be totally immobilised. He's just come over. That's it. Nice and steady. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Relax there, Tom, all the way back down. Well done, Tom. That's it. It's a long way, isn't it? I know. How do you feel now, you lady, on your back? Yeah, a lot better. Good. Do you feel sick at all? No. We're going to um, just sort of package the patient, lift him onto the uh, ambulance stretcher, have a really good look at him, get some IV access, just to make sure there's nothing that we haven't missed. There's no time to waste. The Buttertubs Pass is a remote place, an hour and a half from hospital by road, even with blue lights and sirens. Tom's flying to the James Cook Hospital in Middlesbrough. It'll take just 18 minutes. Hi, 
Fire desk from 99, uh, lifted for James Cook. Over. Tom's condition is causing Sammy concern. He has a series of worrying symptoms. He's got a potential bleed ongoing that we're not aware of within his uh, skull. Um, his chest wall, he could have multiple fractures and a uh, pneumothorax or hemothorax developing. Um, at the moment, his breath sounds are good, uh, but his oxygen levels are low. The extent of Tom's injuries is about to be revealed. He's in a very serious condition. On the M1, just outside Leeds, the hunt is on for a child feared missing after a freak motorway accident. The injured driver of this car has told paramedics Paul and Tony that his four-year-old nephew was a passenger when it left the road and careered down an embankment in flames. We're sending him a picture of him now. The child could be trapped under the car, but it's also possible he was thrown from the vehicle as it careered down the embankment. Yeah, yeah, do that then, yeah. So he's saying what his nephew is, is that Yes. Four-year-old nephew. Four-year-old nephew. Yeah. Right. We've got uh, the fire service re in the vehicle. Looks like they're going to have to try and jack it up. Well, he says that it was a four-year-old child in the vehicle at the time. Yeah, the vehicle. Paul is tending to the injured man. He has a head injury, and with pain in his abdomen, there's the possibility of internal bleeding. Oh. Keep still a minute. What the fuck are you doing? We've got some painkillers going through it. Yeah. We just need to make sure they're going to go through. Yeah. Let me out. Let me out. You right to take that and now sold his arm? Yeah, just yeah. In case. Absolutely. You just relax. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're all right. We are doing. Give us a chance. Using hydraulic jacks, the car is inched up in a desperate search for the man's missing nephew. So the fire brigade had just lifted the car to make sure there's nobody trapped underneath, which there's not, so we'd have to do that. The police are just conducting a search from where the car initially left the road to make sure a kid is not potentially being ejected. But the search draws a blank and a relative tells police the child is actually safe at home. It seems the driver's story doesn't hold water. Looks like probably not, uh, but if that's what he said, you've got to take it serious until we get screwed in. Another thing the police discover is that the car is stolen. Even though the driver has led them on a wild goose chase, the priority now is to get him to hospital. Come on then, don't in you jump. Paul is leaving with his patient for Leeds General Infirmary. Oh. All in a day's work. A full trauma team has been assembled to meet Paul's patient. His injuries are potentially life-threatening, and if he pulls through, his first visitors are likely to be the police. Helimed 99 is based in the heart of North Yorkshire's farming country. Hey, old mate, I'm sending you a job at Stencil. Trample by a cow. And today, there's an emergency on a dairy farm just outside York. Clear across, my discretion, not about 500 feet. Uh, clear across, runway, uh, 99, thank you. Pilot Chris is racing south at 150 miles an hour. ETA, 10 minutes. Listen, Helimed 99 up. There's no time to waste. As paramedic Tony knows, animal attacks can be fatal. How is it sort of herd animals and quite often, I suppose, it's attack people, really. Um, we've been to uh, patients before who've got really serious injuries once they've been sort of stampled by uh, a mob, by a cow. I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to put you in this field immediately below us. There's yep. a gate open top right corner. OK, you've cleared the wire. Your tail's clear. All right, you've got your left wrist. Their patient is a veteran farmer, attacked as he tried to care for a newly born calf. There you go, guys. Local paramedics have been assessing his injuries. Hello. Hey, guys, you all right? Uh, this is Eric. Right. Um, he's complaining of pain 
Um, I've just gently pressed on his hips there and he's complaining of a lot of pain, 10 out of 10 pain on this side here. Right. So whether or not his pelvis... Um, Eric Shields is 83 and still working and he's very badly hurt. Um, the cow trampled him and then attacked him again. My name's Tony, Eric. Yeah. How have you been when it's been trampling on you? Have you been on your belly? I was laid in my stomach, yeah, and she was jumping up and down and back of my legs and mostly bottom half of my body. Mostly? Yeah. Right. Where is all your pain, then? Just down in your pelvic region? Just, just there, right there. Cows with calves can be aggressive. Eric's son ran to his rescue, but was too late to prevent the attack. He had no chance. She was quiet and she just turned. She was right on top of him, like you'll get half a ton on top of you. With any luck, it'll be all right. Was it quite a prolonged trampling then, buddy? It seemed a long time. It seemed a long time, well, yeah. But with that pain, I couldn't move when she stopped, so she come back again, not another go. Did she? Yeah. Well, got it in for you, Benny. His description of the attack is worrying Tony. Eric's pelvis and spine took the full weight of the animal. I'm going to give you a bit of morphine for your pain, mm. OK? Some intravenous paracetamol, mm. again, for your pain, mm. OK? And this will move. If you get any pain, let us know where it is, mm. OK? I say at the minute it's mainly down in your hip area. That's the only so one that was present, a, yeah. OK, mate. The fear is a serious pelvic or spinal injury. Let yeah, yourself go back, bud. Eric could also be bleeding internally. His age is against him, and hospital is 25 miles from the family farm. Just going to bring your toes together, Eric. Eric's being immobilised for his flight. His wife is shocked at the ferocity of the attack by a usually placid animal. He's a farmer, he don't usually get knocked. He must have cast him out. Tried to move something he shouldn't have done. But he was milking her yesterday. Just put your arm up for us, fella. It's had a prolonged stamping by an adult cow. Worst case scenario, he possibly could have a fractured pelvis, which is obviously quite a serious sort of fracture. Um, but saying that, he's quite stable at the moment. He's had pain relief. Uh, so it needs major trauma centre really for some x-rays and scans just to exclude the fact or not if he's got a fractured pelvis. Tony has alerted the trauma team at Leeds General Infirmary. 10, 15 minutes, mate, we'll have you in hospital. OK. OK. Yeah, you got the power line. Got those, mate. Yep. Element 99 Alpha, then stop at the Element 99 Alpha, now 5PB. Just left from the north side of Spencer, en route for Leeds General Customer Basic Service. Eric's condition is being monitored constantly. Elderly people's bones are more brittle than those of younger patients, and they're often less able to cope with blood loss. So at the moment, we monitor his observations. Um, if potentially he's bleeding quite a bit from his pelvis, then we could sort of get some early signs, such as his respirations might start rising, his pulse might start rising, and his blood pressure could start falling. None of that's happening at the moment, so we're fairly sort of uh, happy that he's quite stable. He seems comfortable in himself, uh, so he's got his pain relief on board. It's taken just 12 minutes to fly Eric from farmyard to the heart of Yorkshire's biggest city. Their patient is heading straight to resus and an urgent examination by trauma consultants. OK, guys, so this is Eric Shields. He's 83 years old, uh, quite sustained trampling. Apparently, he spent a few minutes trampling in, went away and came back and started again. Eric's condition is critical. At 83, he'll need all his strength to recover from these injuries. Winding roads of North Yorkshire have a fatal attraction for bikers. Last year, 12 were killed and 81 seriously injured. And the route north from the market town of Helmsley through scenic Billsdale claimed many of the victims. Come on. Okay. It's tea time at RAF Topcliffe, and paramedics Tony and Paul are being scrambled to a familiar destination. Is it biker? Yeah, biker. Cliff traffic, Alpha just lifted top cliff route in north of Sutton Bank for Helmsley. 
Pilot Ian will have them there in just five minutes. Is it in the woods? Yeah, it looks like a bit of a steep hill. Until we actually get there, we don't really know what the injuries are. Um, it's all very sketchy, uh, but uh, potentially there's some serious major trauma. The road through Billsdale is lined with trees. It makes landing tricky. It's in that bit where it drops down the hill. Yeah. It's the first bit from the fast bit to the slow bit, isn't it? And it's from 99 uh, visual we're seeing just looking for somewhere to land. The crash has happened on a bend. It's a well-known black spot. It's normally just the top of the hill, isn't it? Well, to be honest, it doesn't look too far off this. Yeah, yeah. On this uh, here, anyway. We well, yeah, see, see him first, don't we? Yep. Where are you? Looks good to me. Right on your left. Hey guys, we're about to sit down here, is he? Yeah, he hasn't moved. Okay, he's been knocked out. Yes, yes, yes. One of a group okay. of bikers from Stockton is badly hurt. Okay, what's his name? He's beating himself, Gary. Hello. Gary, you want to be him? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Gary, keep your head nice and still, mate. Yep. My name's Paul. Yep. I'm one of the paramedics on the helicopter. Okay, can you remember what's happened to you? No, I haven't got a clue. Okay, no problem. Passers by have been giving 46 year old Gary Matthews first aid. He's only just come round. So what the first thing I think we need to do He's is so we can have a good like look a at him. Pain in the leg here. Yeah, we just need to get his helmet off, but I don't think we're going to manage it easily in the position he's in. Right. OK, so in a few minutes, we're going to roll him over yeah. okay, onto his back so we can have a proper assessment, get his helmet off, yeah. and we'll take it from there. He's lucky to be alive. The crash wrecked his high-powered bike. Gary's mate didn't see what happened. I was just riding up around the corner, and there was his bike. So I stopped, pulled over, and realised that... I knew who it was. The occupants of a people carrier involved in the collision are badly shocked, but otherwise unhurt. Move that arm for me. OK, take some deep breaths. How does that feel? If I press there, there's no pain there, is there? There's a bit sort of there, downwards. OK, can you wiggle your feet for me? Wiggle your toes and stuff? Don't feel numb, tingly pins and needles or anything like that? Not really, no. Fantastic. There's a lot of pain in this leg. OK, I mean, no problem. Luckily, an ambulance carrying trainee paramedics learning to drive came across the accident. It's been quite fortunate in the fact that we've got a lot of people here who's come across it and can give us a hand. Their patient missed the sign marking the start of the dale by inches. He's been really lucky, he's landed about 10 foot away from sort of a stone sign, so if you do it at any speed then you're potentially looking at fatality, so he's been really lucky. The fear is Gary's bleeding internally, and his head injury is worrying. I think he's possibly got a mid shaft femur fracture. Actually, looking at the angle of his leg at the minute through his leather, so cut through his leathers to the dismay of the, of the patient, fortunately. Um, and once we've done that, we'll take his helmet off. He's got a head laceration, so we need to address that. You got it? Yeah, Gary, I'll hold your ears around your my hands around your ears, buddy. Keep nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed, buddy. Removing his helmet is critical. Neck injuries in impacts like this are common. One wrong move could paralyse him. At first, the angle of his of the leathers looked like he got probably a mid shaft, but I think it was just the, the padding on his knee. I think that caused it to look a bit deformed. So it sounds, but he's complaining a bit of pain. Gary's showing signs of confusion. Have I hit the car or is the car hit? Well, either way, you've collided with the car. He could have right. a bleed on the brain. So I just haven't got a clue what's happened. Because you've got a bit of a head injury, I think you might have got a bit of concussion, so you, you're not remember for a while, I don't think. But a more immediate concern is his pelvis. If it's broken, it could cause catastrophic blood loss. OK, we'll get some TXA in him. All right, we'll get pelvic bind one, we'll do it in a minute. TXA is a drug which can prevent right. internal bleeding. OK, guys, just put it, put it together, so just between yourselves. Okay, Plus, he's got a potential pelvic fracture. We don't want to sort of move that at all. The pain in his pelvis could be masking other pains, potentially, in his, in his back and his spine. So we need to keep him nice and straight. So we're using a scoop stretch, which basically scoops him up, keeps him nice and rigid. Uh, so that's the plan. It's sometimes difficult when there's a long grass like now, but, but we'll see how we go. The number of road deaths in this area is a major concern for police. Bikers are routinely photographed so they can be matched to dash cam footage or witness accounts. Right, we're going to roll you towards your bad leg now, Gary, OK? So just bear with us, mate, all right. OK, mate, you're doing really well, bud. One, two, three, lift. 
20 minutes ago, Gary was out on a summer ride through the Dale. Now, he's on his way to the trauma unit in Middlesbrough. Keep pushing. Keep moving, keep moving. Fantastic. OK, listening to the hover helipad departure. All happy? Yep. yep, clear. Paul is concerned about the survival of his patient. A blood transfusion has been prepared, and surgeons are waiting in recess at the James Cook Hospital. There is that potential that it could be bleeding still inside. We're giving him some drugs to try and um, slow the bleeding down that may be occurring. Um, if, he's, if he's fractured his pelvis, you can lose a lot of blood in his pelvis. Um, so obviously what we think we need to make sure is that Gary's not bleeding out. It could deteriorate quite rapidly. Right. Every effort is being made to ensure Gary does not add to the grim accident statistics on North Yorkshire's roads. London James Cook. OK, ready, steady, move. But he's badly hurt, and there are no guarantees. That's it, brilliant. I don't want to ruin it. Sammy Wills is one of the air ambulance team's most experienced paramedics. Every morning, behind the scenes, before we start, we get 30 minutes. We check the aircraft, we do the fuel, we top her up, uh, we clean her out, and uh, then we're good to go. It's summer in North Yorkshire, and while Sammy's hard at work, thousands of people are out enjoying the sun. Top temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius, that's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But a 999 call is coming in from a country pub. There's a 29 year old fallen with a head injury, not alert there in Hickton Bridge. He's got blood pouring out of his nose and his ears. The crew at RAF Topcliffe are immediately informed. Yeah, okay, the members are going 801051. Roger. Helimed 99 is ready for takeoff in less than a minute. Safe locks on the right. Paramedic Daryl Cullen knows it's serious. We've got uh, information that a uh, patient sustained a head injury, um, seemingly is unconscious and bleeding from his ears, which uh, is usually a sign they've got a uh, base of skull fracture. Uh, it's a very serious um, condition indeed. They're heading for a village near the seaside town of Whitby. It's Sammy's job to find it from the air. Here's the road. Yeah, it's there. just goes to the northern edge yeah, of the village. This side of the village. Yeah. Oh, is that an ambulance here? Literally at one o'clock. Yeah, I can see that the building there. Oh, we've got visual. There's a gate to the right of this property here. Oh, yeah, we've got that. That looks pretty good, actually. Beautiful. And that's from that nine on the ground. Come to check for them. Outside the pub, in the picturesque village of Egton, a group of mountain bikers were trying out some stunts, fuelled by a beer or two. Sort of braked and then he's gone straight, yeah, straight over face first. first. Yeah. Yeah. Brint Darnell's very seriously injured. He's hit the ground head first. Faceplant in ambulance slang. Friend said that he was unconscious okay. for a few minutes afterwards. He's complaining to all central C spine pain, T1, T2. He says the pain score is 7 out of 10. And you've just given him five more. Five morphine, right, okay. Brint's back pain is worrying, and so is the blood seeping from his ear. All right, mate, you just keep nice and still for us, we'll look after you. Can I take another lunch? Oh, that's all. Well, it's here now. Brint's embarrassed. It was an avoidable accident, and some of his injuries could have been prevented. Did you have a helmet on? Um, Did you have a uh, helmet no. on? Are you going to invest in a helmet? I've got one. You've got one? Just didn't have it on today. OK, we're going to reel you. OK, on three, one, two, three. Brint urgently needs hospital treatment. Back down, one, two, three. If he has fractured his skull, his life is in real danger. Has the painkiller helped at all? Yeah, a little bit. All right, that's good. I've got a bad head, though. Yeah. Air desk 99. We have a 30-year-old male riding mountain bike, no helmet, face plant. KO'd, laceration to head, back and neck pain. Brint's leaving his pint unfinished and two mates in shock. But he's been lucky. This stunt could have killed him instantly. Welcome aboard, yeah. Brint. Yeah, um, so we just, got, as you can see, we just got him loaded. He's settled now. He's had some morphine, so his uh, his pain's uh, not as bad as it was. Um, James Cook's the nearest hospital, and they've accepted him. 
So we're going to take him up there. And locked in tight in the front, and no loose articles. Daryl's keeping a close eye on his patient. Pilot Steve and Sammy are enjoying the view up front. They're following an old railway line. Oh, lovely valley. Turn that. Got the railway down at the bottom. Oh, the old-style girder bridges look. Uh, you got those when you bought your Hobby Double O railway set. <laughs> you showing, <laughs> showing your ears. Oh, no. Brint's heading for a head X-ray at the James Cook Hospital. The next stop will be intensive care. His outlook is uncertain. The peaceful country lanes of the Yorkshire Dales attract millions of holidaymakers every year, searching for stunning scenery and a quiet pace of life. But appearances are deceptive. These roads are among the UK's most lethal. Helimed 98 is about to lift off from the roof of Leeds General Infirmary for a major accident in Wolfdale. Two small hatchbacks have collided on a remote road. Sierra Delta 974677. Paramedics Al Day and Pete Rhodes are backing up their colleagues on Helimed 99. It's taken so long to free the casualties of the head on shunt, they're running out of daylight. That aircraft is a night capable. Um, and in another hour and 15, hour and a bit, they're going to be have to be back at Topcliffe and they're concerned that they aren't going to be back in time. We are a night capable aircraft, so we've got that bit more time to play with, so we're going up to effectively uh, receive the baton from Element 99. Further we're following Wharfdale all the way up. Okay, okay. Uh, it's above Grassington. The crash has happened near Kilnsey Crag, a famous landmark popular with climbers. Beyond Kilsey Crag, there's a really bad bridge. It's a bridge on a bad corner. Because I've okay, got visual with Kilsey Crag. There's standing traffic further on beyond the blue light. Yeah, yeah. Ouch. Yeah, that looks like it, yeah. Two cars collided at speed. 21 year old Ella is badly hurt. The wreckage shows the force of the impact she suffered. Paramedic Kit has been fighting to stabilise Ella. Now he must bring Al up to speed on her case. Head on. Yep, head on impact. Ella's the driver. The initial impression we've got here is very, very severe intrusion into the driver's yep. side. She was trapped by her legs um, and she was trapped by the door, so she okay. was sort of pinned into it. She's got seatbelt bruising on the right, she's got tenderness on the right abdomen, um, she's got tenderness on the right pelvis as well, and she's got some injuries to the lower legs. It's feared the massive impact may have caused a spinal injury, and she could be bleeding internally. But the immediate priority is to control her agonizing pain. Do you think we should give her a little bit more ketamine? Hey, draws up some ketamine. It's a very strong painkiller, but it looks like she needs more. How are we doing? Oh, you want your mum? I'm sorry. I can't, I, I, I... <laughs> So it's another 20 in a street, and then, and then that'll take up to 90. The driver of the other car has already gone to hospital by road. Her car, though wrecked, stood up to the impact better than the Micra. The dash on the car had come forward and was hurting the knees. So we had to take this door off first so the paramedics could get in and then um, take the roof off so we could extract the casualty from the rear out on a spine board without damaging the neck and back. How are we doing, Ella? So we've out. a bit more relaxed now. <laughs> You're in pain. Is it not as bad as it was? I think we're in the K hole there. Ella is more comfortable. It's time to fly her back to the LGI. Thanks very much. Right, cool. Yeah, you bugger off back to top. Yeah. Speed is of the essence. Bit of mud coming through the gate, guys. Right down as you'll go, Andy. Make sure you've got a good grip. Her injuries are potentially very serious. Don't worry, sweetheart. You're all right. You're going to be fine. We've got her packaged up, get her sorted out, a bit lifted to LGI. Uh, we're going to be chasing the daylight a bit ourselves, but we are, like I said, with the night capable aircraft, technically. 
Um, but now everything's been done, we've given her plenty of drugs, don't waste any more time. Get lifted, get to Leeds and get her, get her some help. We're going to whisk you off to the hospital now and let the doctor have a good look at you, all right? Yes, Al, good. Hedes, nine eight, lifted, route in LGI. Ella's on her way from the heart of the Dales to the centre of Yorkshire's biggest city. She needs emergency surgery. She's had a fairly major um, accident. Um, certainly chest, abdominal and pelvic injuries are all a possibility with where she's tender. And yeah, each one of those could be fatal. Um, so far, she seems to be coping quite well. But you can never be too sure. Um, there was massive damage to the car that she was in. This will be a long night for Ella, her family and the medical team looking after her. The crash has taken a terrible toll on her body. The battle to identify their patient's injuries starts now. Two hours ago, she was involved in a head-on collision driving a car uh, up in the Dales up near Kilnsey. Um, both cars have they're only small cars and they're both massively damaged, both cars. So quite high speed, head on impact. Um, she's complaining of right chest, abdomen and pelvic pain. The results could change her life. X-rays showed Ella had cracked several vertebrae in her back, but her other injuries were minor. She was released from hospital the following day, but the accident continues to affect her. Where is all your pain, then? Just down in your pelvic region? Just, just there, right there. OK, no. Farmer Eric wasn't the only casualty of the attack by a rogue cow. His son suffered a heart attack as Helimed 99 took off and ended up in hospital himself. I went up in the air ambulance, but as he was walking back across the road, he staggered into the edgeway with the exertion of beating the cow off me. But if paramedics hadn't been there, one or the other would have been dead, definitely. Thankfully, both are now recovering, but the animal responsible hasn't been forgiven. She can go for burgers. Where's your nephew? Mm. In the back of the car? Yeah. Are you 100% sure? No! The driver of the car that crashed over the bridge was given a prison sentence after pleading guilty to driving the stolen car under the influence of drink and drugs. He said he'd been trying to end his own life. Excellent, that helmet has done most of its job. Cyclist Tom, who crashed in the Dales, broke his neck and needed surgery to his spine. He also broke his sternum collarbone and two ribs. He needed physiotherapy to learn how to walk again, but it didn't put him off cycling. I was determined to get back on my bike the same year and get back over Butterstorp's Pass. And so three months later, that's what I've been doing today. Biker Gary was lucky Paul removed his crash helmet with extreme care. He had broken his neck as well as his hip in several places and dislocated his knee. And mountain biker Brint had a fractured skull and severe whiplash. He regrets attempting the stunt. Yeah, if I was ever to do it again, which I probably wouldn't be anywhere, but I'd definitely wear a helmet, yeah. Probably a full first one.